Aloha, my name is Kevin Kimball. I'm an Associate Professor of Accounting at BYU Hawaii. The purpose of this video is to help explain variance analysis. The specific type of variance analysis we will be performing is on direct labor. When we perform a variance analysis, it will usually begin with a budget, which becomes our standard against which we later compare our actuals. Now why would you want to develop a standard or a budget for your future performance? The Bible helps us out with this question. In Luke 14:28, we read, For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it? Lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. And you can imagine what might happen to that building over time. It will just simply crumble. Also in Luke 14.31 we read, Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? So you imagine you have this king, he's got his army, he's ready to go to battle, and he does a little spying and he dis discovers that the oncoming army is 20,000. The Bible would recommend, or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. In other words, what he's saying is, he's planned to have a 10,000 person army, he's discovered that it's a 20,000 person army that's coming against him, and he says, oh, before we actually go to battle, why don't I just go and sue for peace? So he's sending the dove of peace, uh, requesting that maybe they resolve their conflict in some other peace-loving manner. Businesses can often improve their results if they first will plan the standards for their performance. For example, an airline knows how long it should take to fly from Salt Lake City to LAX and they have that as their standard. Truck driving companies know how long it should take to get a load of goods from Portland, Oregon to Reno, Nevada. For example, they might have a standard of 10 hours. And maybe a hotel, for example, would have a standard for how much they're willing to pay their work crew on an hourly basis. Another standard they might have is how many hours they expect that work crew to take. So the pay per hour would be a standard wage rate and the hours it takes to clean a room would be a standard hours. But as you know, sometimes the actual results don't always match the expected standard results. So for example, this plane was planned to be from fly from LA, uh, Salt Lake City to LAX in a certain period of time, but as you know, certain things can go wrong along the way. Delays, baggage not being loaded properly, waiting for um, waiting for passengers to arrive. For a trucking company, maybe they got lost and that's why it might have taken more time than what they anticipated. For a hotel, they may have thought they would be able to pay their workers $8.50 an hour, but it could have been a great economy where everybody already has a job and the only way to get workers is to entice them away from their current job by paying them a higher wage rate. Now it could go the other way. You know, a lot of these um, these were all unfavorable variances that I was referring to, but it could go the other way. Maybe you thought you'd have to pay $8.50 an hour, but then we go into a depression or a recession, and maybe you can get very highly skilled workers for only uh, 7 something an hour. When the actual results come in, management can focus on variances from the standards to find areas needing improvement. For example, did the housekeeping tr crew take longer to clean the rooms with their actual hours than what management planned for them to take, which was the standard hours? If that were the case, that would be a direct labor efficiency variance, where the actual hours taken was different than the standard hours expected. Well, what could cause that efficiency variance? Uh, maybe if they used more hours, uh, the work crew could be inexperienced. They just don't know how to clean efficiently. Maybe the hotel's been... Um, having guests, customers, who are extremely messy and they, they really make a mess of the room, so it does simply take longer to clean the room. So it could be a variety of reasons why uh, they could have a, a variance 
maybe the work crew goes in and just takes naps on the bed before they start cleaning. And actually the uh, variance could go the other way in a favorable way where they actually do it quicker than you expected. Maybe the crew is more experienced than you anticipated. Now on the uh, pay rate side, maybe the housekeeping crew was paid more per hour, actual rate, than what the management expected them to pay, which is the standard rate. This would result in what's called a direct labor rate variance. Up here it's an efficiency variance because you're using more or less of a resource than you anticipated. And a labor rate variance because you paid more or less on an hourly basis for each unit of time. What could cause such rate variances? As we mentioned before, we could have a booming economy where it's just hard to attract workers without paying them a higher rate. If you're in a depression, it could simply be that you pay less than what you anticipated. Let's go and look at an example hotel. The background is that this is a medium-sized hotel with 100 rooms with a monthly occupancy rate that varies between 75% occupied to 95% occupied. In other words, if you take that and multiply it out, they have anywhere between 75 and 95 rooms used uh, on average uh, during each month, uh, every day during each month. Management, before coming into new month, would have a standard for housekeeping. For example, maybe they standard hours per room is 57 minutes to clean a given room. So in other words, that would be 95% of an hour or 0.95 of an hour. Standard rate, maybe they anticipate that they will pay $8.50 per hour for their housekeeping crew. So if you went and multiplied that out, if you took the uh, 0.95 of an hour and multiply by the rate per hour, that would be $8.75 per hour to clean a room. And then what you'd have to do is you'd have to take this number and multiply it out by how many rooms were cleaned to arrive at the total cost of cleaning all of the rooms. When you move into the next month, you will actually clean these rooms and you will now have actuals by the end of the month. For example, the actuals for January is that they took 2,915.55 hours to clean all the rooms necessary over the whole month. The way that worked is, on average, they needed 104.5% of an hour, so that's a little more than 60 minutes per hour, to clean a given room. But then you have to ask, well, how many rooms did they clean over the whole month? You can do the math. You take 100 rooms, but it's only 90% occupied, so that means 90 rooms per day were occupied. How many days are in January? 31. So you multiply that all out, and that says that they had to clean 2,790 rooms over the whole month. You multiply that 2,790 by the uh, amount of an hour needed to clean a room, and you get 2,915.55 hours to clean all the rooms for the whole month. That is the actual data for January. As you can tell, it's different than what they anticipated because, if you recall, we thought we could clean a room in 0.95 of an hour, but here we've gone and used more than that. So this is going to be an unfavorable variance in our efficiency. Now, the hourly workers, when we go back and check the accounting records, we realize that, on average, we paid our workers $8.20 per hour. So the total actual labor cost for the whole month is the number of hours you needed, multiplied by this $8.20 per hour, and that gives us a total actual labor cost of 23,907.51. The math here is this hourly times the rate, multiply those together, that's the total actual cost. As you know, that's going to be different than what we expected it would cost, and that was 22,529. The math for that is you have to say, okay, how many rooms did we clean? As you can tell up above, the number of rooms we cleaned is exactly the same. 100 rooms, 90% occupied, 31 days. That's how many rooms we cleaned. But how long did we think we would take to clean a given room? 0.95 of an hour. So you multiply that out. We thought we'd only need 2,650.5 hours to clean all the rooms, when in fact we actually used 2,915. So that is an efficiency variance. We used more hours than we expected, and that's going to be unfavorable. Going to the rate, we thought we would be able to pay $8.50 an hour, but in fact we only paid $8.20 an hour. That's going to be a favorable variance because we're paying less actually than what we anticipated. So if we take our total hours needed to clean all the rooms over the month, 
multiply by the standard rate, this gives us the standard cost we would have expected to clean all these uh, rooms. You compare the two, actual to standard, and you're going to get a variance. So what caused the variance between our standard and our actual? Was it the rates? Was it the time? Would it be useful to know? And I think you'll realize that it, it certainly is useful to know what the cause is. Was the variance favorable or unfavorable? Well, let's look at it. If the standard we expected to pay was 22000 something, and the actual is 23000 something, you can tell that that is unfavorable. We are paying more than we anticipated. That's a $1,278.20 six dollar unfavorable direct labor variance. That's in total. Okay, We didn't break it out between the rates and the time yet. In total, between these two added together, it's unfavorable. So let's see how we could break this out. If you took your actual rate and you multiply by the actual total hours you needed to clean the rooms, this would give you your actual cost, which was that $23,000 figure. Now, to come up with the actual hours needed to clean all the rooms, you'd have to take the total rooms, multiplied by the occupancy percentage, and multiply that by the number of days in the month. That would give you total rooms cleaned. But then we have to multiply that by how many hours it took to clean each room. That would give you our AH here, actual hours. Moving on, if we take the standard rate that we expected to pay, then multiply by how many actual hours needed, that would give us our total expected cost based on these actual hours at the standard rate. So if you were to take the difference, if you take the standard, standard minus the actual, you're going to get uh, a number. And in this case, that number is going to be negative. Because if you recall, actually this one wound up being uh, positive. Because our standard rate was higher than our actual rate. Our standard rate was 850. Our actual rate was 8, uh, 830, I think, or 820, if I recall. And uh, that winds up being a favorable variance. We'll wind up paying less than what we anticipated. Now, moving on, uh, as you can see, this actual hours came from the same computation, which is up above here. Now, to compute what we would have expected um, to clean uh, all the rooms. What we would do is we take the total rooms cleaned, but this time we multiply by the standard hours per room. So if you take the standard rate times the standard hours per room and offset it by the standard rate times the actual hours, then you're going to get a variance that's caused by the hours. Over here, the variance was caused by the rate, as you can see. Whereas here, the variance between these two numbers will be caused by the hours. So let, let's uh, show what that would mean. If we kind of if we simplify this number, assuming we take the standard rate times actual hours minus actual rate times actual hours, and we reduce that, you can see that you can simply get the AH off by itself and multiply it by SR minus AR. So this here is the same as SR times H minus AR times AH. We've simply reduced it, and we would call that the direct La the direct labor rate variance. Moving over to the side, the difference between these two, as you can see, the difference is caused by the hours, and so this is going to be our efficiency variance. And the SR we can put by itself and multiply by SH minus AH. Remember, we're taking this number minus the other. And as you can see, this is going to be a variance caused by the number of hours used. That is an efficiency variance, direct labor efficiency variance. Now let's put in the numbers that we actually had from our example. If you recall, it was $8.20 actual hourly rate. We multiply by the total hours used to clean all the rooms, which was computed by taking the 100 rooms times the 90% occupancy times 31 days. That's the total, um, total rooms cleaned. We multiply by the number of hours needed to clean each room. And you can see that up here, actual, actual hours per room. And that's the total hours needed. So if you multiply these two together, this is the total actual cost. That's really what is in our accounting records for the month of January. Moving into the middle, we take the standard rate, what we hoped we would be able to pay our workers, multiply by the actual hours needed, and that will give us the expected cost based on our standard rate. 
the, it's using our actual hours used uh, multiplied by the standard rate. And then, moving over to the other side, which is pure standard, we're going to take our standard rate and multiply by the number of hours we would have expected to clean these actual rooms. So we take the actual rooms times the expected hours needed per room. And you can see the difference between these two will be caused by the over or under usage of the hours. So if we take the difference between these two, you can see that we'll, we've got the 2915 in hours multiplied by the difference in the rate, and that is our direct labor rate variance. Direct labor rate variance. Moving to the other side, and that was uh, that's actually positive. As you can see, we paid less actually than we anticipated, and therefore that's a favorable variance. Moving to the other side, uh, the standard rate will be the, the one outside the parentheses over here. And on the inside will be the variance between the standard hours we expected versus the actual hours we used. And that is an, a, a variance in the hours or an efficiency variance, a direct labor efficiency variance. As you can see, we thought we'd use 2650.5, but we used 2915, so that is unfavorable. We used more than we anticipated. And therefore, we have a total direct labor variance between the two of negative 1378. A total unfavorable direct labor variance. Now you might ask yourself, what caused this? Well, as you can see, we used more hours than we thought. So we might have unskilled workers, might have messy customers, might have lazy workers, um, variety of things like that. That could be the explanation for the efficiency variance. You go over here and you look at the rate variance, it's positive because you're paying people less. This may explain why these people are taking longer because maybe you're only hiring less skilled workers paying $8.20 an hour. You can only get less skilled workers and they just simply work slower and therefore take longer. So this is called management by exception. The big idea is that you plan ahead with standards for your hours, standards for your rates, then you run that for the month or period of time and then you compare your actuals to your uh, standards, see where the variances are and then try to understand what may cause those variances. And as you can see, although this is a favorable variance here, um, it may indicate why you have an unfavorable variance on the other side. So don't get too narrow-minded and think, oh well it's all here, this is the problem. It may be that you're just hiring uh, workers th that uh, aren't as capable as you could get if you actually uh, hired people at a higher rate. So I hope this has been helpful to you to give you a big uh, picture. I would recommend that uh, you print out the prior page. I will have uh, this PowerPoint slide presentation posted um, on my drive and print out this prior slide. Let me just go back and show that. I'd recommend that you print out this page. This is a great summary of how these variances are computed and it'd be very helpful as you go into Accounting 203 if you haven't had that class yet. So, aloha!